Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and all our attendees. Uh, welcome back again. It's time for our next set of sessions uh, right here as we are part of a very interesting uh, uh, conversation around the nine payments of Reloaded 2021. I do hope you all managed to have a refreshing and a rejuvenating break. Uh, but with that, let's deep dive towards our next discussion around democratizing payments, greater participation by non-banks in the digital payments ecosystem. Now, to set the tone and also to moderate this wonderful panel discussion we have with us Arushi Jain, Associate Director, PwC India, who comes with more than a decade of experience in advising clients in the BFSI sector on digital payments as well as fintech. Well, joining Arushi, we also have our set of some amazing panelists. We have with us Mr. Amit Purohit, Vice President and Head Digital Business, Aditya Billa Sun Life Asset Management Company, whose career spans over 18 years with prominent industries such as BFSI, telecom, and pharma. We also have with us uh, Ms. Arundhati Banerjee, who is the COO of Zagal. In fact, she's a payments and fintech veteran who comes with more than 15 years of experience and her expertise lies in business strategy, product development, strategic partnerships, as well as PL delivery. We're also joined by Mr. Madhav Minocha, who is a Senior Vice President, Digital Payments Product Head, Anderson Bank Limited, and he's someone who's known to be a result-oriented professional with extensive experience in spearheading product development, business operations, process controls, and much more. And that, of course, leaves me with our final speaker, who's also armed with more than 15 years of experience in the payments industry. We have with us Mr. Deep Agrawal, Head Payments, Phone pay. So it looks like a remarkable panel discussion with some amazing speakers and an amazing topic. So on that note, I'm going to urge all our members of the audience, keep your questions coming and we'll have it handed over to our moderator to take it uh, towards the end of the session. On that note, I'm going to be handing over the session to our session moderator and the panelists. Let the session begin. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a great day so far. Lots of interesting discussions happening. So first of all, I think thank you to everyone taking out the time to be a part of this uh, panel discussion today. Thank you to all the panelists. Uh, so in fact, the topic that we will be covering today, as Kavya mentioned, is, is personally very close to my heart. And you know, talking about democratization of payments and how do we make it a level playing field and enable greater access to non-banks uh, in this digital payments uh, uh, world, right? And, and especially what's the role of the central bank in enabling uh, this, this greater access? So that's what we will be talking about today, right? And just to set a bit of um, you know context or a background to it, uh, you know, as we all know, FinTech has been spearheading, all the non-banks has been spearheading all of the digital innovation, let's say the product innovation that's been happening in this space in the recent past. You know, they've been able to solve problems of uh, access and adoption alike, you know, which, which banks have not yet been able to. So in, in different ways, innovative ways. And RBI, let's say, has been cognizant of this fact and they have been enabling access to all non-banks uh, in, in a progressive way, to all digital and financial architecture. And non-banks have been taking you know, good advantage of it. So, 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 it's, so it's good times for non-banks and for the consumer you know, to, to, to be in this state. And you know, just, just furthering this agenda of, of providing non-banks this access, so earlier this year, during the monetary policy update, uh, the RBI had suggested a few more changes which potentially could be game changers for this industry. You know, so, so we will be focusing our discussion today, uh, the panel discussion on, on some of these changes. So the first one of which is access to the central payment systems. So NEFT and RTGS, which, which uh, traditionally has been uh, uh, just offered to banks, uh, but now will be accessible by non-banks as well. So that's one of the uh, major changes that have happened. 
it will reduce the dependence on banks a, a lot reduce the systemic risk in the system so it's it, it's going to be a game changer there you know and and the next one that we're going to talk about today is the ppi interoperability for full kyc ppis along with the cash withdrawal facility and the enhanced limits so what we will be seeing today is you know how how of course the non banks here and the panelists here you know are are extremely excited about uh, all these changes uh, but you know i i want to start off the discussion by by getting a bank perspective here and and manav you know i'm looking at you here to 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 give the first perspective uh, you know so so manav banks you know traditionally uh, have had this competitive advantage uh, let's say you know uh with with the, all the financial access being traditionally just allowed to banks and non banked uh, transactions being being routed via banks with the with right. the landscape changing right with with all of this changing uh and non banks today might even just start offering you know nft and rtj services to customers yeah right? so how do you see that impacting your customer stickiness uh, right and and how are banks gearing up for that what are their next steps right so, so i just want to get a banking perspective there uh see i'll uh, first of all uh, i'll just want to say that all what i say is my personal opinion i'm not uh, speaking for the bank per se but yeah personally uh, i have always believed and i continue to believe that fintechs play a very important part in uh, as we have the subject of the uh, discussion as well democratizing payments and banks are have always been good at banking services if we talk about payments uh, since whenever this wave of payments started i think uh, fintechs have been extremely instrumental in increasing the volumes they have not taken away the volumes from, from the banks uh we have here uh, our, my uh, colleagues my friends from uh, phonepay from zagle all these players are working in tandem with banks so it's not that uh, banks and fintechs are competing for me it is a solution it is a innovation it is customer convenience which is getting built together with fintechs and banks and while yes rbi is regulating or maybe uh, giving more autonomy to these fintechs i think it only helps the cause it does not create a competition for the banks banks are good at banking so that's what we banks are not technology companies banks are banks are not a uh, kind of innovators in in those lines what fintech can bring to a, to the table for the customers i think banks may not necessarily focus on that so the value brought in by the fintechs only complements the uh, banking services and i think uh, there is no competition it the entire ecosystem is growing together and we welcome this move a regulated fintech is more reliable is more uh, accessible for the bank as well to partner and and grow so that's what uh, as a bank i would say uh, we all kind of view these developments thanks thanks manav i think it's an interesting perspective that you brought to the table you know each each one of them is playing to their individual strengths and what yes. we're looking at is is cooperation rather than competition so, so yeah yes. thanks thanks manav for that so so with that uh, i think arun dati i i want to move on to you next uh, right so so you know we've always seen fintech especially like yourselves you know keeping technology at the heart of it you know building solutions for your customers and providing them financial services right with this access to central payment systems you know this will be another lever for you to leverage and and build unique services for your for your customers and with a very reduced dependence on on banks right so so i want to understand how big an opportunity you know do you do you see it as and also are there any specific use cases or proposition you know do you, do you see gaining traction with this uh, or direct access absolutely so uh, thanks for the question uh, arushi and uh, you know hi to all my friends here so uh, you know i i probably kind of uh, start by talking a little bit about these this whole uh, place where it's just really fun to pit the fintechs against banks 
uh, I'd love to kind of uh, second what Manav just said, you know, so it's, uh, it's absolutely impossible for the two entities to do without each other. Right. So, and, and we've kind of uh, seen this through uh, through our entire journey that uh, if, you, if you remember, they see fintech was not even a word probably probably, you know, 10, 12 years back, right? So uh, it probably emerged uh, a little bit in the developed markets with pricing and user experience uh, being the core uh, pieces being driven. And then later down the line, it moved to infrastructure, right? And, uh, and uh, honestly, I think India has been, uh, you know, it's, it's a case study in even developed markets in terms of how regulations in, uh, you know, fintech and regulations in the industry have actually helped India leapfrog in the fintech movement, right? And uh, quickly on the, on the, you know, in terms of, uh, I think I read a recent BCG report that said that fintech in India is going to be a 150 to 160 billion dollar valuation uh, industry in uh, in 2025 which is almost like 3x of what we are today and uh, payments is definitely definitely the flag bearer of uh, you know the fintech industry in India so with with that uh, said i think uh, you know uh, fintech non banks uh, like has to work very closely and uh, in complete collaboration with banks and especially at Zagal uh, we've done this in fact uh, Manav <laughs> and I work very closely together uh, in terms of a lot of offerings that we have in the market right and uh, purely in terms of uh, you know the, the new regulations I think it's very heartening to see how the regulator is helping this industry grow right and uh, a lot of times not just in India I've worked uh, in various other developing markets earlier uh, i think when you when you go to partner with a bank specifically that's that's a custodian of trust the way we view banks is they are the custodian of trust that's why card consumers come to banks right so they uh, ban banks are very high on regulation security compliance and rightly so so sometimes you know uh, a, a lot of areas where fintechs were not regulated becomes an area of concern so with what the regulator is doing in the country for us i think it just kind of helps this collaboration further right so it kind of opens up a whole new access to the fintechs the and all of us know that uh, india is a large country there's a india and a bharat with fintechs, I think uh, it, it just they, it just opens up the probability of taking a lot of offerings to newer user segments, to you know the nooks and corners of the country, uh, and I, I think that's that's what uh, you know the, the regulator is also trying to push. Right? It's it's very very. Uh, uh, it's very heartening the amount of confidence the regulator is putting in the non-banks in terms of opening the access to the CPS. And uh, that kind of takes away a lot of risk from the system. Uh, there's so many use cases. It kind of brings down the cost of payments. It kind of takes away, reduces the, you know, the, the uh, rate of failure in the entire execution of the payment ecosystem, right? So I think it's a, it's a uh, definitely an extremely progressive move as expected from the Indian regulator. And uh, that said, I think the fintech plays to its strength. Uh, which is the entire, uh, you know, the tech-driven business model and the bank uh, plays to its strength, which is being the custodian of trust for decades uh, now, right? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Arundhati. I think it's an interesting perspective. And, you know, seems like uh, banks and non-banks are now happy with the diversity this, this uh, you know, this access neutrality has been bringing to the table. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Arundhati. So, so Amit, I, I want to, uh, you know, get in your perspective next. Um, so, so, you know, uh, it, it's a different kind of perspective that I'm looking from you, um, you know, with, with RBI, let's say, extending this uh, access uh, in the first phase to just uh, PPIs, uh, um, you know, and, and uh, uh, card networks and uh, white label ATMs. You know, what do you feel about them extending this access or in fact, you know, any other intervention that you feel, you know, RBI could make for, uh, you know, different entities, you know, globally also we've seen, uh, 
you know other countries having a much wider access to a greater set of non banking players you know let, let, let's say merchant processors they do not need a bank at the back end for processing payments right so i just want your uh, opinion there you know what are some challenges uh, let's say you're facing currently that you think potentially rbi could look at uh, in, in in the coming time well thanks so i think uh, uh, first of all thanks a lot for uh, inviting uh, me over here and it's, it's it will be a great learning experience for all of us so uh, for our industry specifically like what we kind of look forward to is you know we feel you know we are in the business of taking money from people and uh, you know these monies are in the form of uh, either a monthly or a very regular uh, uh, investment or a lump sum uh, investment uh, where somebody has uh, surplus money and he wants to invest for a better future so i think for both of these uh, there are in a way unique uh, challenges like you know for a for a monthly uh, payments i think the amounts are small but you know these amount need to be uh, uh, you know seamlessly without any friction needs to be debited from the consumer's account and kind of you know you know, you know it, it it needs to come to us so i'll just cover that first so i think in that i think what we have seen is there are you know great number of changes with the regulator has brought in and uh, you know kind of you know, widen the net in terms of who uh, all can participate like the recent changes that you know you have talked about plus i think the modes of uh, making payment so i'll just give an example like the recent uh, upi mandate which is you know gone live and 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 you know and the way uh, you know people are picking up that as a means to register customers sips uh, you know through this mandate one of the brightest example is uh, you know uh, my partners uh, here like phone pay so phone pay has recently picked up and you know uh, you know it is it is doing wonders for end customer what you know and you will not believe it actually registers your sip in flat 5 seconds flat 5 seconds select a product enter the amount enter your four digit pin your you know your sip is registered i mean what more you know can someone want so uh, i think um, going forward participation from more and more uh, i wouldn't say non bank but for more and more entities uh, you know would kind of help us uh, you know widen the net because net net what all of us have done in in the in the industries hardly maybe 2 3 4% of the customers have gone onto the bandwagon of uh, investing and you know making their uh, the future brighter so today large amount of money either is you know below the uh, pillow or max to max it is in the banks you know you know somebody is earning an fd or on, on a retail uh, this thing and also i you know i think a great step and we always believe that rbi as a regulator is one of the biggest uh, you know uh, support for the whole of uh, ecosystem uh, the, the last mile uh, guy you know how we all know how they have kind of helped you know uh, secure uh, you know the 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 lowest of the denominator customers uh, money also at the same time thinking through and kind of bringing all these uh, you know wide looking changes in fact we get surprised the way rbi and sebi come up with the regulatory changes many a times many of the industry guys also have not thought through so that's why uh, they kind of uh, you know come back and kind of help the overall ecosystem i'll cover the next point which is you know getting the money from Uh, the customers on the on the larger amount side like you know the the suppose you want to invest 5 lakh and 10 lakh and and maybe more than that so i think that's where i think some amount of uh, innovation is needed because most of the times i know it is bank led wherein you know ba- you know banks ask customer to put the limit saying that how much you want your uh, net banking to kind of this thing and if you want to increase you come back to me or something like that. so those places maybe if you can give a little better uh, experience to the customer both bank and non banks in terms of uh, you know making that transaction also seamless uh, frictionless and you know within a within a within a jiffy i think that overall would help us in a lot and specifically i'll just touch upon the sme and the corporate uh, you know entities also how someone can make uh, you know their uh, you know paying uh, you know life easier uh, smoother because technically and we all discussed that there are only two problems you know that this particular industry is kind of uh, you know needs to overcome one is entry and second is exit entry is kyc wherein uh, you know all the time you know we ask the customer to prove himself so, you know no matter what if you have done you know bank account also 
you know you need to come and give it give me your uh, kyc you need to prove you know you are who you are and where you stay and you know what you do and all that so that many a times becomes little um, you know overwhelming for the end customer who is kind of getting into the whole segment for the first time so how do you make that simpler don't ask so many questions to him and maybe automate the whole thing like how we are moving on to the bandwagon of video kyc and all that but if you ask me it is hardly 5% of the whole of the industry that has done so 95% is kind of to be done and second is the exit how do you make the payment so much more seamless that it becomes you know part of his life it doesn't have to think also while he is making a payment upi has done a great great service to the the whole country i think if we can leverage upi to many more use cases why can't credit card be part of upi why can't uh, you know your loans you know disbursement of loans be be riding on to upi and many more use cases so yeah uh, i just uh, had to submit this and and thanks for that thanks amit i think you know very good food for thought and i think not just for the central bank but for some of our fellow panelists here as well so you know thanks thanks for bringing that uh, perspective of it great yeah thanks so deep i i want to move uh, to you next and you know just is picking up on the point that amit mentioned you know upi has, has has done really well and especially you know for a player like you you know we we all know that you've been able to capitalize the the upi bandwagon you know rather well on on upi front right and and with all these changes that are coming in with the access neutrality um, you know lesser disruptions uh, you know lower delays in in processing of transactions the customer experience is just bound to get better right and and uh, we will see the volumes going uh, or shooting up even further you know the kind of exponential growth you were able to see with upi i, I think you know potentially it could be replicated uh, with these things you know but as they say you know with with power comes responsibility right uh, so you know with with these growing transactions uh, and i'm sure you need to put additional measures in place you know better technology better systems additional security protocols uh, so how well uh, do you think our non banks prepared for that uh, and and you know uh, even if you are prepared do, do you think it would uh, impact let's say the agility uh, you know non banks have been known for till now thanks uh, <laughs> uh, i just like to you know pick from one point uh, before i answer your question uh, which amit made right uh, kyc is a bit of a touchy topic uh, but uh, i think uh, the regulator across uh, all the industry they all try to really work uh, very hard uh, to make it as digital and as seamless as possible i'm hoping that that will get even further uh, simplified going forward uh, coming to your point uh, at phonepe we've always believed in collaboration right since day one uh, and uh, we have worked with banks we've worked with npc as well worked with the entire ecosystem uh, to uh, right since day one we have been in the upi uh, ecosystem right since day one and uh, from the success rates which we saw at sub 30% level to where they are now at about 90% uh, we have kind of worked with uh, the banks to work with npci to bring it to this level so the reason why i was saying this was uh, our systems our platforms our processes they've all gone through a five year grind already uh, they've all seen the entire journey of uh, where we started with to where we are now getting access to centralized payment systems uh, directly helps certainly uh, it helps with uh, lesser uh, operational issues it helps with lesser latencies uh, higher transaction success rates etc right uh but the point which you made about agility uh agility is something which i think is embedded fairly strongly in the dna of the organization and yes uh, getting access help in adding more use cases but uh, that does not necessarily slow us down uh in fact uh, it makes us a lot more focused additionally towards uh, being more compliant Uh, to uh, adhering to the requirements of uh, the regulator uh, etc right 
Uh, we have been a regulated entity right since day one of our existence, uh, thanks to our PPI license. And uh, we have built our processes and systems to ensure that we scale without compromising in any man manner at all on the compliance aspects, on aspects around operational scale up. So uh, just to give you an example, uh, the architecture we have had in our system right since day one, it's the same architecture which supports thousands x or thousands of x growth which we've seen in such a short time, right? So it's about building for solutions with the aspect of thinking about future where scale will certainly happen. And we don't really worry about agility because of that. We don't add people to solve scale problems. And uh, that is uh, something which we feel will continue to be there. Uh, on the aspect of uh, coexisting with banks, uh, I'll, I'll kind of you know come back to that uh, quickly. Uh, I think uh, the banking ecosystem has been in India one of the best uh, exhibitionist of what can be achieved with collaboration. UPI, in my view, is the biggest and probably the first example of implementation of open banking at uh, scale, uh, right? A lot of other uh, geographies talk about it, but we've done it, implemented it, and scaled it significantly. So I think I think it's all going in the right direction, and the RBI seems to show additional confidence in the ecosystem by uh, showing or showing this path uh, towards opening up additional access. Great. Thank you, Sanjay. Thanks, Deepak. I think it's good to know that you know non banks are geared up for this uh, rapid growth that that's to come, and you know that that wouldn't be at the cost of customer trust. So yeah, thanks thanks for adding that perspective, Dave. Great. Uh, so I do want to touch upon uh, you know the the other uh, change that the RBI has brought in, and you know that's for PPI interoperability for full KYC PPIs, right? And uh, you know, maybe I, I want to start off with you, Arundhati, here, um, you know. So uh, we, we all know, you know, RBI had released these guidelines, uh, um, you know, for PPI interoperability sometime back as well. And uh, the market didn't really see a lot of traction there. So which is why I think they've, they've made it kind of mandatory now. So, you know, uh, with, with the PPIs becoming interoperable, uh, you know, the, the revenue models are bound to get a realignment, they're bound to change because of models of the uh, industry are bound to change, you know, also with the cash withdrawals and the enhanced limits. So, so this, uh, with this entire, uh, you know, realignment, how do you think your product propositions, uh, you know, will change? How will you, uh, uh, let's say, a certain newer use cases, which will be relevant for these uh, changing business models? Sure. Thanks. Thanks for that, Arushi. So, um, yeah, you're right. I think uh, the RBI governor, uh, you know, issued the necessary guidelines way back in uh, October 2018. And uh, in terms of uh, adoption towards interoperability, right? But uh, we really didn't see a lot of voluntary adoption there. So, which is now why it's a, it's a mandatory, uh, you know, mandate for all full KYC PPIs and for all payment acceptance infrastructure. So uh, I think, you know, the allowing of cash withdrawals from all PPIs, uh, you know, in, and in conjunction with this mandate for interoperability, this will kind of boost migration towards uh, KYC PPIs and would obviously complement the acceptance infrastructure, especially in the tier three and four centers, right? So uh, the other piece uh, with interoperability is that it will uh, definitely give a, a, a lot of, um, you know, push to, uh, you know, the wallets to kind of claw back a little bit of the space. Right. So uh, uh, basically interoperability will provide a really uh, good push to the wallets and PPI providers. The only piece is when, when uh, you know, when we do this, uh, the transition might be fraught with a little bit of, uh, you know, the kind of risks that we see in digital adoption, right? Customers will have to be a little more careful about uh, digital frauds and wallet providers and what uh, Deep said, you know, the, the kind of security infrastructure that, uh, you know, payments providers are investing on uh, becomes very important uh, with this kind of an interoperability move, right? And 
obvious the regulator's objective is to protect the customer and make the transactions as uh, safe as possible. The good part is, you know, the fintechs and NBFCs are a, a very significant contributor to the credit growth, right? They've captured a large portion of the credit pie and they're being able to reach out to the entire uh, un of the underbanked sectors and playing a pivotal role in the overall financial inclusion objective. And uh, that's where I think, uh, you know, the regulator wants to push, uh, you know, the fintechs particularly to kind of address this further and opening up many such actions access areas uh, for them, right? So, yeah, I think uh, all of these moves are catered towards uh, a wholesome objective of financial inclusion. And it also shows confidence in, uh, you know, providers like us in terms of how we are able to cater to the, you know, the overall uh, data infrastructure, the security infrastructure, and how we are putting up governance models to cater to the, the necessity of the customer. So basically growth doesn't come at a cost, right? So that's the whole intention. So thanks for the question. Thanks, Arindirti. So you know, what, what we're hearing is, uh, you know, PPI interoperability, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, you know, people have to tread on it carefully, you know, all, all the aspects need to be considered while the benefits are huge, but of course, you know, there, there are different considerations. Thanks, thanks for that, Arundhati. And, and the, uh, so, you know, following up on, on what uh, Arundhati said, uh, right, while there are two sides of looking at, uh, you know, the PPI interoperability mandate, uh, right, so I just want to hear from you the the other side of it. Uh, you know why why do you think uh, uh, the industry players, the PPI players, were not very keen on let's say uh, having this uh, attraction around uh, bringing the PPI interoperability? You know, of course there are multiple benefits to it, but you know I I, I completely understand there are considerations uh, uh, like you know customer choosing to give up a few of their accounts, which might even lead to a potential consolidation in the industry, right? So, so I just want to hear from you on the other side. So, uh, like uh, Randhati mentioned it, uh, about three years back, RBI came up with the guidelines uh, with voluntary participation. They gave a roadmap. Uh, they kind of, you know, described how you implement that, etc. cetera. Um, however, I think uh, two or three areas where uh, they really fell short, in my view. Uh, number one was uh, KYC at that point of time specifically uh, wasn't easy at all, uh, right? Uh, Aadhaar had this whole fuzziness around it. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, clarity which was needed, uh, which has very, very recently started coming in. Uh, video KYC was not really allowed uh, and uh, CKYC as well was not really uh, as well spread out. Uh, so KYC was a really big challenge, honestly, uh, for uh, players who had to do KYC at that point of time. So that was number one. Uh, number two was uh, a significant growth in the UPI transactions uh, was uh, kind of uh, leading to questions for consumers, for players, for everybody. Uh, around the kind of use cases and the utility of uh, PPIs and wallets. Uh, and that was a bit of a transitionary phase, if I would say so. Uh, now I think we all know where UPI is heading towards. And uh, as an ecosystem, as PPI players as well, we are absolutely aware about the areas where we can solve for better with a wallet, for example. Right? And the third one, uh, was uh, the fact that it provided for limited participation and in interoperability, which basically meant that uh, a player who has a PPI license uh, can only allow their wallet customers to transact using a, a PPI handle, for example, on UPI, right? Uh, it did not really go the full hog and uh, allow for full interoperability in that sense. Uh, and hence, I think uh, the participation was minimal. Uh, the value wasn't really seen as much. Uh, this also kind of uh, got uh, extrapolated with uh, uh, RBI introducing the min KYC wallet, 
about two years back again. Uh, and that kind of, you know, uh, provided a fillip to the min KYC wallet variant, which had kind of died down uh, for quite some time. So all of these factors coming together uh, created that challenge at that point of time. Uh, given that there's a lot more clarity around most of these areas now, uh, I think there will be a lot more enthusiasm and participation uh, from the players. Uh, and I think a uh, few areas uh, which, which include things like commercials, which include things like the access which will be provided, et cetera, uh, need to be solved for. But uh, given the fact that RBI has made it mandatory, they will be solved in some manner, right? And we will see a lot more uh, participation. Uh, use cases, I think, will be in the areas of uh, offline transactions, uh, in the areas of uh, maybe uh, uh, gaming, uh, which is a lot of these fantasy games, etc., right? Which are becoming really popular these days. Uh, and uh, things like uh, grocery purchases, online transactions, etc., which may or may not be as well solved with UPI today. So that's that's what I see uh, happening. Uh, I think it also gives an option for uh, smaller issuing players. Uh, to get access to larger acquiring networks where they can enable uh, or allow their consumers to use their wallets uh, or PPIs on larger uh, acquiring networks, either through UPI or through card networks. So all in all, I think it's a good move at the right time. Uh, over the next six to nine months, I think we should see things move uh, in a really, really positive manner. Great. Thanks, Deep. Also, I think to add on to it, Deep, I think, you know, with the direct access to the central payment system, some of the use cases that come, you know, to, to coming back to your point, I think they will be truly worthwhile along with interoperability. Absolutely. Yeah. So thanks, Deep. A very interesting perspective. And, you know, all of us are here to see how, how the industry grows, you know, with PPI interoperability. Thank you. Thank you. So Manav, uh, I want to move on to to you next. Uh, you know, to to get your perspective around this entire uh, interoperability uh, mandate, uh, right? You know, with especially with full KYC PPIs uh, and the enhanced limits uh, and cash withdrawal facilities. You know, they they would uh, look let's say like a quasi banking environment. The entire PPI uh, uh, you know network. Mm -hmm. Uh, how, how do you think, uh, you know, banks are preparing for that uh, and especially around, uh, let's say, the semi-urban and the rural sectors and uh, if we talk about the customer segments, you know, the, the MSMEs and the small merchants, uh, uh, how, how do you think uh, non-banks or PPIs are placed to, to uh, address the problem areas there? And in general, you know, not, not just from a bank uh, perspective, what do you feel will be the key success factors uh, uh, right, which would make any any player, a bank or a non-bank, successful in in this segment, given the changing landscape. Yeah, uh, I, in my opinion, uh, uh, Aruchi, I think PPIs or non-bank uh, PPIs, to be specific, are yet to kind of uh, come up to the curve wherein these new regulations can help them not only compete or uh, with the bank so as i said earlier it's not a competition but create solutions which do uh, give them a advantage over what the regulation allowed earlier uh, very frankly this limit going from 1 lakh to 2 lakh uh, full kyc cash withdrawal interoperability whatever has been allowed on ppi say for example it was always there with the banks right uh, cash withdrawal was always there, interoperability through networks, uh, uh, PPI instrument issued on a prepaid card through a Visa, Master, Rupay network. Interoperability was always there for a uh, bank issued PPI. And partners like, uh, say, for example, Zagel have been working with us on these solutions for years now. These new changes that have been brought in, I think uh, fintechs and banks together are yet to come up with solutions, uh, innovations, which will allow or maybe uh, which will help PPIs overtake a UPI solution. As uh, Deep said earlier, uh, when these interoperability guidelines came about three years ago, uh, since then, prepaid hasn't grown much. 
it has been upi even uh, say i'll i'll just name one uh, uh, paytm paytm was the biggest ppi player at that point of time and if you look at the uh, movement that has happened since then paytm's ppi has gone down and paytm's upi has gone up right the money is there in the bank account paytm is allowing you to access it use it spend it or receive it whichever way so ppi per se i think has to evolve uh, the first or the greatest use case introduced by, by paytm around demon and everything was a wonderful use case there but since then uh, nothing much has changed on ppis i i think uh, for a prepaid instrument a uh, new use cases uh, have to come and fintechs i strongly believe fintechs are the ones who will uh, uh, bring those use cases in banks are there to of course support but uh, yeah upi has been eating into the uh, ppi share i would say and uh, you don't feel the need of parking money in your wallet first and then transact you are transacting uh, phone pay is enabling you to make payment to any merchant Uh, through your bank account, any bank account, using a single application, then why uh, get into a hassle of uh, moving money from one source to another? So yeah, I think uh, while these guidelines have uh, been loosened, uh, we are yet to see uh, better use cases come up where these can be utilized well. So yeah. Great. interesting observations man i'm interesting yeah yeah i'm i'm sure uh, you know ppi counterparts would would agree to that but but yeah it, it's to see you know how how this opportunity shapes up yeah and and how yeah. financial innovation you know it's all about that so so yeah we're yes. all here to see how it shapes up thanks thanks manu great so amit i want to bring you in next and it's a very interesting perspective uh, you know that we're looking at uh, from you you know as, as a consumer of digital payments uh, and you know you you're dealing with a lot of uh, let's say the panelists here the banks non banks you know ppi players so with this interoperability mandate coming in uh, you know i i want your uh, views on two areas specifically you know as as a industry how do you see um, you know this mandate impacting and when i say industry you know on the customer side do you see the customer experience getting better with with this right and the other area i want you to touch upon is the uh, business and revenue models for players like yourselves you know dealing with multiple ppi players uh, do, do you think there would be a shift in in your business model and how you deal with uh, you know different non bank players given this mandate very interesting question first of all so uh, um, i think what i see here is uh, you know uh, if you take care of first uh experience part like you know the, how customers are used to using ppi for various use cases and you know you have a first mover advantage then i i personally like if you ask me this question this is completely you know personal answer i don't see me moving to uh you know something else apart from you know the experience which i have been doing you know since some time so this is a little challenge with the human behavior you know you 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 don't change the behavior quite often unless and until it is quite stark like all of a sudden upi came and uh, all of us remember where how upi came in the beginning upi came in the beginning with uh, you know that um, i i don't remember the number also there was this particular number which you 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 are supposed to you know uh, you know give it to the per person to whom you want to add into uh, you know I, in upi and Uh, and then only you can use to transact. And suddenly, over a period of time, the moment IMPS along with the four-digit PIN and all came in, I think that changed the whole world. And you know, uh, you know, somebody, I think Manav was mentioning that you know, uh, intrinsically, uh, all of us in in uh, as con consumer have an inertia of you know, uh, not moving a lot of things. So you know, your money lying in the bank account will always lie, or no matter what you do. So I think. many a times i i tell you know to my friends and all of the colleagues that you know end of the day we all end up working for a bank uh <laughs> no matter what you do uh, you know you end up working for a bank knowingly or unknowingly because you know uh, wherever you go you know you know my your personal money is in the bank you know your uh, corporate money is in the bank you know you transact money where, where where does the money go it goes into the bank so eventually that life is not going to change i think what will change is the with 
the interoperability uh, i think uh, over a period of time you know you like it you don't like it people will consolidate i think a lot of money lying here and there people would want to consolidate and say that you know i want one account statement i of that ppi i want one view in terms of how where i'm spending and you know in life needs to be a little more easier so if if becomes uh, you know interoperable then i will kind of you know consolidate so eventually the use case will win i don't know uh, whether you know obviously all of us know uh, in us which is the biggest bank do we all know uh, i will not say biggest but i think the large amount of junk lying in in us is with starbucks you know the starbucks uh, app and the and the and the payment that you make uh, you know buying coffee huge amount of money lies there because what people end of the day are looking at is convenience saying that when i'm i'm standing in the in the queue or maybe I'm, when i'm buying online i don't want to swipe here and there and you know make a make a purchase let it be maybe 1000 rupee yeah, i'm converting into inr let it be 1000 rupee lie over there and you know whenever i kind of you know want to buy a coffee i just hit one click and you know my at least my payment is taken care so i don't want to go through the hassle of buying cappuccino and frappuccino that anyways is a is a hassle so that i have overcome now beyond that i don't want to you know make life easier uh, difficult by making a payment choice saying should i make a payment through you know upi or should i make a payment through in neft or uh, rtgs don't doesn't come here but you know you know through some other debit card or credit card and you know how many cards i will save and there is a, a, a security overhang you know for the cards and obviously a lot of things in india has been taken care with 2fa and all that but i think convenience if somebody is taken care of, uh, as part of the use case uh, a lot of things will move there uh, as as part of uh, you know uh, you know people making those calls saying that if 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 life is convenient i'll move there and you know i'll consolidate and you know create a you know kitty over there uh, uh, so in in saying that i think a lot of a lot of competition customer eventually wins and uh, you know uh, you know consolidation is 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 the way forward that's what i see going forward sorry if i have ruffled some feathers i i didn't intend to but <laughs> uh, by the way i'm huge fan of uh, all the upi apps including uh, including phone pay and google pay so you know great amount of work done so the banks like hdfc icici so kudos i including uh, idfc so great work thanks thanks i'm with what a stellar way to to you know end the conversation <laughs> yeah praising a panelist but yeah absolutely you know i think it, it it's been a great discussion uh, that that all of us have had uh, and, you know we, we didn't even realize uh, that we've been speaking for an hour so so yeah i think it's been an extremely insightful and thought through uh, discussion and you know uh, good observations coming through from all panelists uh, i'll just wait or maybe check uh, if if there are any questions coming through uh, you know otherwise i i think uh, in in my opinion uh, you know expanding this access and this entire interoperability thing uh, you know banks and non banks i think equally everybody is both excited and geared up at, at the same time uh, to, to you know make the most of uh, of these changes uh, and and we are pretty sure this is uh, going to be a game changer for for most of us uh, in the industry uh, more than anything you know i i think it's going to bring in more diversity and build in a lot of resilience uh, in in our digital payments uh, ecosystem so yeah, I, i think that was uh, uh, it from my side i would want to open the floor to anyone uh, you know at this point in time if you have any closing remarks or any you know pertinent uh, points that you think uh, you know would be very relevant to this discussion you know anyone deep arundhati amit manav you know anybody who wants to come in at this point in time arundhati i i see you are muted go ahead i think a single line here uh, arushi is you know banks or fintechs or non banks or nbfcs ultimately it's the consumers who win so that's that's where i think all of us on the panel are focusing on and uh, i i liked what amit said in terms of the use case wins right so it's up to us as to how we can uh, you know create the necessary use cases so that we make the consumers life uh, better that's it from my side personally saying sorry uh, if i can come in uh... you know i think what arundhati said you know is kind of in you know, a bang on 
I think personally for all of us who are kind of part of this, uh, you know, you know, fortunate industry, uh, what will make a huge sense in terms of satisfaction at a personal level is how do you make the last mile transact the 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 person who is on the street and you know kind of he uh, takes a loan on a daily basis and pays a hefty amount of uh, you know payment to someone who is kind of lending it to him so how we can make use of a lot of data uh, and kind of while while kind of underwriting you know his credit uh, just kind of moving away from a little uh, this thing but obviously this is part of the payment so how do we use a lot of data underwrite a lot of uh, uh, you know, credit part and make last mile's life easier uh, while he transacts and he deals with money. So that, uh, you know, we re don't realize, but the last mile in terms of the theft and the and the fraud and all those things which happen is, is, is you know, is, is kind of uh, disturbing. So if we can take care of that over a period of time saying that how do we touch those lives and make those lives much more safer and secure, it, it can be a huge service, uh, you know, to the nation. Great, great. Thanks. Thanks, Amit. Manav, do you want to come in? Yeah, I uh, I agree with what Amit said, Arundhati said. I think, uh, and what I started with, this is a collaborative environment. Payments ecosystem has been changing drastically month on month, year on year for last good four or five years now. I think it is... Uh, in the next three years, perhaps it will be a different landscape altogether. But yeah, I think it is. these are exciting times for all of us in the uh, payments industry. Yeah. Uh, uh, looking forward to work together with fintechs, with the uh, regulated uh, uh, entities, the networks, and see uh, how it shapes up. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Manav. Deep, over to you for closing comments. So first of all, I'd like to really thank you for uh, moderating this amazing discussion. So it was a great uh, conversation. Uh, I think uh, Amit uh, and Arundhati, they got it absolutely right. Consumer is the one they're all solving for. Uh, and if we all have the right uh, focus, uh, I think we will all probably find different paths to reach there. Uh, it could be collaboration. It could be cooperation. Uh, it could be maybe something else. Uh, right, but I'm pretty sure that if the objective is right, we'll all ensure that we reach them. Thank you, thank you. I think to everyone, I think it was an amazing discussion. Look forward to interacting with you all. Back to you, Kavya. I think. Thank you, thank you very much, Arushi, for beautifully moderating that session for all of us. And thank you indeed to Arundhati, to Manav, to Deep, and Amit. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon and for sharing your valuable insights. Much appreciated. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Well, with that, we call to wrap to another insightful session, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yeah.